to give us a countdown. Hey, now we are. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm, uh, I'm going to be uh, sharing some very cool things here today. I'm lucky to have Alex Mellon. Is that how you pronounce it? That's it. Actually, uh, Alex Mellon uh, on the uh, call here today. This is a new broadcast. Uh, it's published in multiple locations, including iTunes and Stitcher and Google Play, as you know. Uh, but you'll see it elsewhere. And um, this, uh, this title here is How to Become a Inc. 5000 Fastest Growing Company. Uh, I guess it's the third year in a row now, and uh, Smart yeah. Sites, uh, which we'll hear here in a second, is a full-service digital uh, uh, agency in New Jersey, uh, reading from some of my notes here. And um, it's, uh, as I said, uh, fastest growing, third time in a row, started in 2011, and they are a Google channel partner, and we'll hear a lot more here with Alex today. Alex, welcome. Nice to be here. <laughs> great, to, great to have you. Uh, in fact, I've sort of put this together with a quick outline. Uh, and we'll cover a number of topics here today. But really, I want to start with, as we always like to do, is understanding a little bit about you. And I, I know you started this company back in 2011 with your brother, Mike. Yep. And if you can just kind of break down those beginning uh, hours and days and weeks and months, you know, it's not easy yeah. to start such a, uh, a big endeavor. And at that time, I'm sure you had a, a different mindset for where this was going. But if you can give us a breakdown of where you started, the background, and, and some of those struggles out uh, out the first few years there. Yeah, definitely. So great question. So we started this company in 2011. I started with my, with my brother, like you were saying. Uh, so prior to starting Smart Sites, I was working at Publicist, uh, which is one of the biggest digital digital and media companies in the world, uh, working on both Samsung and Walmart accounts there. And, and that was a great place to be. And I really loved the time I worked there for three years. I think it's the longest time I've stayed anywhere. And it was a great place to be. Uh, but being there, I realized that uh, there's so much potential in the digital space that the bigger agencies were providing to companies like Samsung and Walmart and whatnot uh, that the small businesses and medium businesses were missing out on. Uh, traditionally, if you're a small business or a medium business, let's say you have five employees or even 50 employees, uh, you, there's really, a, your resources in the digital space are very limited. Uh, a lot of times people wind up using someone's cousin, sister's friend's brother from high school to make them the website because they made a website before and then they want to do digital and they don't really know how to do digital, but this other guy's cousin's girlfriend has done it before. Um, and even if people, when you get a little bit bigger, people try to hire in-house, uh, but that's also a struggle because you're not going to hire one person in-house that's going to do your SEO, your pay-per-click, your website design, your your logo, your media, everything. Um, so all those businesses are really were missing out on the on the whole digital process. And even now in 2019, there's still a lot of businesses that haven't entered the digital space just because of those barriers. Uh, but the idea back then, 2011, is that uh, I could apply all the things that uh, Publicis was doing at a big agency level for these big companies and bring it and make it a, a feasible service to provide to smaller businesses to get them into the digital space. Um, and at the same time, my brother was finishing college at the time, he was finishing Cornell, uh, and then he was doing a lot also in the digital space. He was uh, he was working more on the SEO side, and he actually had one of the first SEO agencies that ex literally he was right at the at the start uh, of the whole uh, industry of getting yourself better organically on Google. So we just combined what we were working on and, and started this company. That's phenomenal. Uh, yeah, you can, uh, if you're listening, you can't see this, but if you're watching, uh, you uh, can see it there, smartsites.com. Um, I'm just curious just to go back a little bit, uh, if you will, Alex. Yeah. What was it, uh, like you mentioned, your brother, you know, you know, came from Cornell, he was already yeah. a CEO, et cetera. What was that sort of spark, I guess I should say, that said, you know what, we, we both are, you know, semi established yeah. or we have... Yeah. It's not like you're just from the streets, right? I mean, you're yeah, yeah. But there was something that said, you know what? We need to just get out of this corporate uh, drone world. Yeah, here. yeah. So for me, it was probably uh, for me it was probably the biggest risk. Uh, the 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 place I was at at media uh, it was uh, media vest was a, the the division of uh, Publicis um, was a really great place to be, and I you know. I feel like a lot of people don't have that, but I really enjoyed coming into work. It was, it was, I had great, great uh, people I worked with there. So for me, it was probably the biggest, the biggest like risk to jump into it. I think for my brother, it was pretty simple. I think he didn't want a corporate job. I think, uh, and what's funny, so we, he decided, we decided that we were going to do this. Uh, I think about, he was midway through Cornell and, uh, 
about uh, like a couple months later, we decided that for this to work, we can't wait for him to spend another two years finishing Cornell because by then the industry will shift, will miss opportunity. So he actually wound up finishing Cornell in one year at that point. He finished it a year early uh, to make that happen. And as soon as he finished, we, we started the company. But I think to answer your question, the trigger point, I think, was that uh, while, while in college, he just decided he didn't want a corporate job. He was like, I've seen it out there. It's it's scary. <laughs> I think that was. I think that's uh, for. Then he had to convince me to drop my job. But I think that's that's what uh, triggered it. That's cool, and that that requires some foresight because uh, I, yeah. I know. I mean, I deal with entrepreneurs. Uh, we started uh, uh, our world here in two thousand and seven, but you know there is always that trigger point, right? And then ultimately, yeah. going from like a secure spot as you were to a risky yeah. place. What would you say if somebody was, uh, you know, thinking about doing this? I mean, we we deal with also entrepreneurs have gone sort of, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm out of the corporate, I've gone rogue, I'm going the entrepreneurial yeah. track. Um, you, you know, obviously, you, you got to have some foundation somewhere. But uh, what would you say is the uh, impetus to do something like that uh, to really get going with it? Because, I mean, you could have done it and six months in realized, maybe 12 months in, yeah. We've only been struggling, and cash flow is is not happening. We are not attracting the right clients. You know, twelve months is wasted. Let's cancel and go back to our normal deal. Like you obviously can't foresee the future, but I'm just trying to get a sense of what somebody else might look at from your yeah. world. Here's what you really need to do to get that transition as smooth as possible. And, and smooth is just in quotes. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Uh, so it's definitely it's definitely a big risk. Um, I think for e even for us, where we already had a lot of foundation and we're doing a lot of this stuff, uh, we had to sign a I think two or three year office lease. Uh, we hire twelve employees off the bat. Salaries for everyone, furniture, computers. It's it's a lot of startup costs, no matter how you look at it. Yeah. Uh, but even so, I would tell people to do it, to take the jump and do it, because I think at the end of the day, uh, I don't think you're gonna regret doing it, even if it fails. Uh, but I think you're gonna regret not doing it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, life by default is risk, right? It's just yeah. how you manage that. Yeah. Yeah, and and by default, people are risk adverse. Uh, people would, would would most people would more likely stay in a comfortable job than take the sleep and do it. Um, but I think if if there's any opportunity and people come across, uh, I talk to a lot of people. I try to do uh, I actually do public speaking events now, and I try to get people involved in the actually doing and doing these ideas and being more entrepreneurial. Um, I uh, people come to me and say, oh, I don't have the opportunities. I think a lot of people have the opportunities. It's just identifying them. And I think uh, once you learn to identify the opportunities you have, you just have to be ready to take the jump. Whenever the opportunity presents itself, it can't be like, well, I'm in a good place where I am right now. I'll wait a year or two. Uh, you just can't have that mindset. And it's tough. It's, you, you really have to uh, take yourself out of your comfort zone to do this. And you take a very big risk. Financially, um, a lot of people, when you're a little older, obviously you have families. I have kids now. For me to take the risk now would be a different scenario than when I did it uh, eight years ago. Because now I have, I have, I have family. I have two two small kids um, that depend on the the income, the insurance, and everything. So I think there's uh, there's definitely a lot there's a lot of risk for for uh, anyone who's considering it. But I think you, you, once you identify the opportunity, uh, I, I think you have to take it. I think it's easy if it, even if it does fail. I think for most people, and you could talk to people who've done started businesses and failed. Very few people regret it. I think at the end of the day, even if it failed and they go back to their corporate job, it's a huge, huge learning opportunity and build so many, so many important skills uh, of leadership of everything. Literally going through this process. That's that's great info. In fact, that's uh, that's inspiring uh, for you yeah. folks watching and listening uh, to just uh, take the plunge or take the leap. Yeah. Obviously, a level of, of risk management, as I mentioned. But do you think that, because uh, I've dealt with this also personally, but bringing with a family member, they say, do not go there. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, you must have had a pretty uh, synchronous uh, sort of relationship uh, bringing in your brother there. Yeah, so that's funny. So I've, I've heard that also all the time. And I think out of everyone who is concerned about it, I think uh, I think my mom was probably the most con concerned. Um, because I, I, as you know, you, you hear the horror stories, right? Like uh, people just yeah. don't get along. They they split up the business and there's there's tons of horror stories. Um, I think what's funny is that for, for me and my brother, uh, as opposed to, like you said, synchronous relationship, I think the only reason it works is because it's the opposite. Because 
we're very, very opposite, and we do very opposite things. Um, the, the, the things that he does in the business, I wouldn't want to do, and the things I do, he wouldn't want to do. We're so different that we just stay in such different categories, and, and not, not it j just luckily works out well enough, but um, that, that's how it's worked for us. But I've, I've heard horror stories. I've also heard it work out okay. Uh, it's, I think it's very similar, uh, whether, whether a sibling or family member or uh, anyone else really uh, working with a business partner, I think has the same risks. And I think uh, it, there's just a lot of ways to mitigate that when you start the business, I like defining specific roles. I think there's ways to mitigate it, but uh, especially with siblings and, and family members, like you said, I've heard, I've heard that a lot. And, and heard, in the beginning when we were just starting, a lot of people were concerned in my family. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, you don't want m mom chasing you down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, uh, it's a it's a very professional uh, outfit now. It's uh, obviously changed a, a lot and added a lot of value to so many clients over the years. Um, I'm just curious. You know, as you mentioned, you you sort of went in all the way, uh, all all in, as I say, and uh, yeah. you know, obviously, uh, you know, funding, money, you know, overhead, yeah. right out of the gate, uh, you know, salary, employees, but to get that. Uh, uh, you know, foundation is one thing, but to then keep adding to it and, you know, I'll use the word scaling, which is yeah. really all about, you know, how do you drive your your marketing, your sales processes and how do you onboard clients that are the right fit, not just, hey, come on, come on down. Me and my sister are developing websites over here or me and my brother in yeah. this case. Yeah. Um, what were some of the sort of perhaps even tough learnings about you know, who's the right client? What's our target audience? You know, who are the ones that we really want to work with? You know, sizes of company, verticals, you know, all of that. Yeah. And then at the same time, learning that process and, and finding your way, if you will, but also developing sales and marketing processes to support that. I mean, this is a kind of a large question, but maybe you can speak to that. Yeah, so there, I think there's a lot of parts to that question. I think the first piece, uh, you pointed out something really interesting, actually. Scaling is probably the toughest uh, thing any any uh, small business, uh, any entrepreneur, any startup would have to do. Um, and it's not just scaling, it's scaling at the right speed and in the right way. Um, I've been involved in companies on all sides of the spectrum. I owned another company, a technology company uh, in the late 90s, uh, where we decided to scale very conservatively, uh, literally take no risks, um, take on no investors, grow organically really, really slow, um, literally slow and steady was our approach. And uh, we were just, uh, and. We, we worked out for a couple of years, but eventually we we're completely destroyed by all the companies that actually scaled very quick, got funding, invested in things, and um, it it was a we had the, the technological advantage, we had all the all the right things, uh, but we were just growing too slow in an industry that was growing quick. Um, I've also been involved in a company on the other extreme that actually uh, during right right at the peak of the previous dot-com uh, bubble. I feel like we're almost in another one, but at the peak of the last one, uh, grew too quick. Uh, uh, cash flow didn't matter at all. It didn't matter because it didn't matter to the investors. Um, it was all about getting more users, more users, more users. Uh, we grew at a crazy exponential rate and eventually cash flow disappeared and everything collapsed. Um, so with those experiences, we've grown smart site somewhere in the middle. Uh, we try not to grow at a crazy rate, but it, we've been growing enough to be, like you say, in Link 5000 third year. Uh, uh, we, we, uh, at, a, at, the growth, at the growth rate we've been going at, we double in size every two and a half years or so. Um, so that, that's, that's the scaling question. The reason I want to touch upon that, because I think, uh, for entrepreneur, that's the biggest challenge, especially for like the tech startups out West where, where you are in California, uh, there's a lot of pressure to go really quick and you just have to really find the balance between growing quickly, growing slowly and growing the right way. Um, and I think, uh, when, when evaluating and looking at companies that do it right, they, they, the companies find their own balance of, of growth. Um, your second question, uh, uh, which uh, the question itself, how do, how do you find the right market, uh, for us as a company, like who, who to work with and everything. And I'll tell you in the beginning, uh, our, and it was part of our advantage. We were like a very scrappy company that would do anything digital, anything people throw at us. We had we would not say no to anyone. Uh, we took on uh, equity agreements where instead of money we work for equity, which was terrible. We we're still like 
partial owners of some companies that, that don't exist here and there and everywhere. Um, we, we also did projects that, that weren't part of our core just because we were throwing nets everywhere. For example, we had an opportunity to, uh, after working with a couple of e-commerce stores, create our own. So we literally created our own uh, sporting goods e-commerce business from the ground up, literally operations, uh, everything. We had boxes fill, filling up our offices. We would literally ship sh uh, sporting goods that would come in. We would deal with customer service. Some lady got a glove that she claimed was had a glass in it and she cut her finger, like like issues like that. And it's so far outside of our core. We're like, we're not, we're not like uh, e-commerce operations, like uh, warehouse people, yeah. uh, but we were just literally doing everything that we thought we had an advantage to do. Um, I think it just over over the years, we, we really uh, honed in on our core services and where we drive the biggest value to our clients. And that from that, we now have processes in place and we, we turn down business. If it's not something that's our core business, for example, we don't make apps, which is, we do almost everything digital. We just don't do apps because it's not our core business. Our programmers could make apps. We've made it when we've been forced into it, but just not our core business. So we turn down the business when it comes to us and people say, uh, can you make me an app? We're not gonna say, oh yeah, we're the best the best app builders. We'll make you the best app. We tell them this is not our core service. We could help you with other things, but not with this thing. So I think it just takes a while to build that discipline and build the process and to real, really realize what your value add is for clients and focus on where you could provide the most value. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, and that is, I mean, we talked about you know, breaking out and starting your own business. That is part of the, the journey in learning. I mean, uh, you know, there is, there is uh, many a YouTube video, many a book out there and resources everywhere. Here's how to run a company. Uh, you know, from both an operational context, marketing, sales, <clears throat> you know, hiring processes, technical aspects, you know, infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the world that we live in now, amazing, right? Yeah. Access to this data is everywhere. However, it's not until you actually do it. Yeah. And, and actually, I would say I, I uh, you know, mentioned this briefly in the, uh, the registration page for this podcast failure and then people yeah. don't like to talk about that right it's like yeah. oh yeah let me share all my mistakes in my life uh heck yeah. no let me share my successes yeah. but it leads into a question that i have and I, I i might just be recycling this a little bit but i'm just very interested in this um in the uh you mentioned that uh, e-commerce example yeah. you know, not your core uh, uh, sort of service and your unique ability mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned uh, take anything under the sun yeah. What would you recommend if, if somebody is starting out and trying to do this and they do get those opportunities, you know, Warren Buffett talks about, you know, the ability to say no, right? But if yeah. you're, like you said, scrappy and running, yeah. at some point you got to just dive in and do it, right? I mean, is there a, yeah. a guideline that you would say you could follow there? I think you, I, I would recommend people following our guideline um, of literally in the beginning, just do everything. I think uh, you're off the bat, you're not going to know what you're good at and what you provide the most value in. I think it takes time to really hone in on that. And I think in the beginning, you really have to, um, and it's not even like a financial thing. You could be very well funded and you don't need to take on everything. But I think to some extent, you really need to get involved with a lot of things to really figure out uh, where your value lies. And in uh, for us, uh, you know, if, if you asked me uh, when we just started, if we're going to, if we would wind up where we are right now, I don't think I would say that we, we had other, other things that we were involved in that at the time was, uh, was uh, running a lot more successfully. Uh, we were doing a lot on the social media side that, that looked like it was going to blast off that we still do social media, but it not, not the, the stuff we used to do. Uh, we used to do a lot of things on the web hosting side, which was growing really, really quick that could easily have been our entire business today. Um, so you, you really, you really never know. And fortunately or unfortunately, I think as a startup, uh, in any space, you really have to try to try to take all the business, not even not all the business you can, but get involved with as much different things as you can until you really figure out where, what your core services are, where you provide the most value, what work, what which services is, uh, do you provide that actually your your customers appreciate? They make money, you make money, like everyone wins. And it's not going to be all your review services, but you really need to figure out where where, where your strategic advantages are. Yeah. Wow. Great summary. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, now in two thousand nineteen. 
uh, what are your goals this year? Is it a specific segment of business? Is it uh, or you know a B two B website design full circle yeah. type of client? Uh, speak to that a little bit. I'd be interested to hear. Yeah, great question. So uh, I would say our business could be could be separated almost into uh, almost equal pieces between uh, web design work we do, SEO, and then the paid ads, pay per click. Um, and I think all three are important. I think uh, uh, we provide the best results when we wind up doing a comprehensive solution where where we literally do everything digital for the client. So that we become the instead of just the agency, we become uh, we become the 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 digital partner for these companies. So they're, they're, for example, we're running their SEO pay-per-click, we made them a website, they wanna get new business cards designed, they'll come to us. So literally, we just partner for everything digital. That's usually what works best. Uh, 2019 and going forward, I think that was the beginning of your question, uh, we're trying to, so we, we've determined our core services, we're really, really good at it. Uh, people get huge value from it. So if you Google around about us, we have all five-star reviews, we've never had anyone dissatisfied with what we do uh, because of uh we have such a focus on providing value and customer satisfaction and everything that it's literally a core part of our business. Uh, so the goal going forward is now to expand as we've been doing, but to keep growing. So we're now at about 85 employees. Uh, we plan to end the year at 100. So again, not crazy growth, like not like some of the startups uh, in uh, Silicon Valley who you see like go from one employee to 500 overnight, uh, but we're trying to, to grow at a, and again, this was uh, the, the big challenge we discussed uh, two questions ago, trying to grow at a level that's good for us. So not too slow, not too fast, uh, grow at a level where we can actually grow the company without sacrificing uh, any of the services we offer or any of the quality. Do you think that uh, if you look forward to, let's say, three years, you could be a 200 uh, uh, employee company or more? I think so. Uh, I think uh, that's that's the path we've been on, uh, both employee count, number of clients, revenue. Uh, I think that's that's the that's that's our pace. It's uh, I'll tell you, it's a lot harder to grow to go from uh, at least that's the way I feel right now uh, to go from uh, 70 or 80 employees to 150 than it was from like 5 to 50 or to 75. Um, and, and I'll tell you the biggest challenge is up until this point um, either me or my brother have been able to be involved in everything and and literally touch all components of the business, uh, talk to all the employees, know everyone, know every client, know every employee, really uh, help in every part of the business. Uh, the next level up, that's not gonna happen. Uh, as we grow to 100 employees up, that's that's literally not gonna happen. Um, I, I was just on a, a doing, um, doing a uh, speaking session in Vegas uh, a couple of weeks ago and I met with a gentleman there who's from Aust Australia and he has uh, he also his company grew has been growing quick I think he has 2,000 employees or something like that um, and he was telling me a funny story how the other day he came into his office building uh, uh, late late in the evening uh, and the security guy stopped him there and he was like who are you and then they called over like the secretary and the secretary didn't know who he was either oh. um, it's, uh, but it's funny that he's like uh, because he travels a lot now but he's he's like you get to a point where literally he, he's like in the beginning I knew everyone uh, everyone knew me and then you get to a level where everyone still knows you but you don't know everyone. He's like, now I'm at a level that some people don't even know who I am. So um, I think that's uh, the, the next uh, step up is is definitely harder than what we've gone through so far to date. But I'm I'm excited for the challenge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, when uh, when somebody says Alex and Mike, who's that? That's, that's yeah. really made it or you know, somewhere in the middle. There's yeah. Yeah. Uh, this whole delegation discussion. Yeah. But yes. Oh, that's, no, that's very cool. Uh, impressive yeah. stuff and uh, really uh a lot of value here today, uh, just understanding how uh, you know you can grow and, and get on the uh, yeah. 5,000 three times in a row. Uh, one yeah. of the final questions I wanted to cover with you, Alex, uh, is you know I had put in who's your superhero, if you recall. Yeah. I thought you had a great answer to that. Uh, you know, I, I, we all want to be inspired by something yeah. or somebody, and uh, maybe a combination thereof, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, speak to that a little bit. I, I yeah. Love so I, I, won't, I won't get too philosophical. Uh, my answer is that there, there's really no superhero or anyone specifically that, that I follow that just I, I feel like is doing a, a, the best job in the world. Uh, it's very easy to say like this person or this person. A lot of people say like uh, 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 Elon Musk or like they, they name some of the like top and people just because they heard the names and they don't know their names. But I think there are so many 
people out there that are doing amazing jobs that just you you don't know about. Um, and I think it's really um, in a day to day. There's almost everyone is is a superhero, right? They, they do outstanding jobs. I've I've met so many people, especially now. I, I do a lot more traveling and, and public speaking. I meet so many people that they're not the CEO of the company, right? They're not they're not the they're 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 not the CEO of uh, Tesla, like middle management or whatever it is. But they do just uh, such outstanding things. I'm just floored. Uh, whether whether it's in the business. Whether it's uh, whether it's uh, volunteering and donating their time, or I'm I'm always floored by the amount of people that are doing such amazing things. So I think there's there's a really an ability for everyone to do something amazing. I think from the HR uh, perspective of like in your company, I think it's literally the the management job to bring out those those literally best features of the employees and let them succeed and let them do amazing things. But I, I believe everyone out there is capable of doing amazing things. I don't think it's just Elon Musk, for whatever reason, is the only one that could do amazing things, right? I think everyone can. It's just uh, up to the people and the, their 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 family, friends, uh, management or work to really coach them and bring that out. Nice. Yeah. And it, it speaks to, uh, as I get to know your company more and, and yeah. you and your brother and the whole team, this this personal um, connection to people yeah. and uh, not just sort of uh, I, I have these people up on a pedestal yeah. and, uh, and not feel connected because everybody yeah. seems to adore these folks. I should too. You're, you're getting yeah. more granular and specific about uh, who you follow and who is your quote unquote superhero, yeah. which yeah. is the people you don't hear about often. I like yeah. that. Yeah, uh, yeah. definitely. Uh, that's cool. Well, you know, uh, I uh, I have shown your uh, website, smartsites.com. Uh, here we walked through this a little bit. It's been a phenomenal uh, uh, talking to you here today. But uh, what is the best way that somebody could reach you and and or your firm here? Obviously, smartsites.com. Is there any other, if somebody wanted to get started uh, with the process of, of interviewing and talking to your organization? Yeah, it's a great question. So smartsets.com is a great place to start for people who are listening, maybe not by a computer or something. Uh, contact at smartsites.com. Uh, we'll get answered right away. Uh, our phone number 201-870-6000 would also get answered right away. And of course, smartsites.com or Google Smartsites, you'll, you'll, you'll get to the right place. Um, and then me personally, I made it uh, super easy. If people want to go to alexmelon.com, A-L-E-X-M-E-L-E-N.com. I have a personal page up just with all my social media profiles. I'm very active on Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, and a lot of places. So uh, feel free to connect with me on there. Yeah, there you go. It's up on the screen. It's uh, it's phenomenal, <laughs> Matt, all this tech stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Uh, well, uh, again, uh, really appreciate you taking time. I'm so glad we got uh, time to to put this on our calendar together. And uh, do you have any final thoughts or, or parting uh, uh, notes uh, for anybody listening and watching today? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for your time. Um, I think uh, final notes, final notes. I, I think back to the beginning where we started. I think if anyone's on the fence with starting a business, it doesn't have to be as extreme as, as what I did of quitting your job and quitting everything. It could be something you do on the side. You could do in the evening. Um, pe people always feel like they, they don't have the time for it. But if, if, if you really think about it, people are working. Let's say they're working at nine to five that they really hate, right? Um, they get home at five. Even if you spend time with your family three four hours right you still have hours in the day so don't turn on that tv right don't don't like lay down and watch netflix for three hours uh, i think there's so many opportunities and people have so many great ideas and uh some of the greatest innovations in the world in the last decade any time period you look at it's literally people just coming up with ideas and then actually doing them so i think my my final words is for people uh who are on the fence to so jump in do it uh, could be part-time, it could be full-time, um, anything I could help with. I really love helping people succeed with their ideas. I'm available on uh, on my website, connect with me on all the social medias, uh, message me. I'm, I'm always looking to help people. That's phenomenal. Great parting notes there. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, say hi to your brother, Mike, and uh, we'll, do. we'll have a chance to maybe connect after this, but it's really, a, really been a, a real pleasure, actually, and uh, I'm glad we had a chance to meet. So. Thanks again, and uh, thanks everybody for listening and watching. And uh, please like, share, comment, etc. And uh, as you can see here, alexmellon.com, uh, smartsites.com. And uh, that's about it for now. So I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. <laughs>